There are votes taking place on Capitol Hill, or about to be, to pass a clean continuing resolution. That is essentially like, uh, we're just going to extend the budget that we had for last year into this year. It will extend until December 3rd. It is expected that this will have uh, support from Republicans. They will allow this to happen. Nobody wants a government shutdown. However, it is unclear at this point how the debt limit will be raised. It appears as if really the only options that Democrats are going to have, and they keep trying to pass uh, in the Senate, uh, presumably to make it clear that uh, Mitch McConnell is obstructing uh, this. I, I have a, a thought on that in a moment. But um, my understanding is, and it feels like there's maybe three people in the entire country who have a sense of, of how this works, uh, because no matter who I talk to, they all have some varied uh, um, response. But the debt ceiling could go into the infrastructure reconciliation bill, it theoretically would make it a must pass. However, I've heard some people uh, that I've spoken to uh, on the Hill say that they think that actually Manchin would vote against that because they know that there's an opportunity to do a separate reconciliation bill exclusively for the debt ceiling and raise it that way. That may happen, but it's going to happen relatively quick we will see i mean it seems like schumer's opposed to that for some reason maybe it's because he feels like it's a waste but this time is also a waste where you're trying to shame mitch mcconnell and hypocrisy shame him which is impossible <laughs> well and and you know and i and i think that's what he's doing i think he's trying to make it seem like it, this is a very extreme thing that they're doing it is conceivable that because, and we're going to talk about this in a moment, that uh, the Progressive Caucus has basically said, we're not going to vote for the bipartisan uh, framework on Thursday, tomorrow, uh, unless we're going to have a reconciliation bill, which, of course, they're not going to have one. So they're going to need some type of ironclad promise. It's not inconceivable to me, though, I have, this is purely speculation on my part, that the the promise and i don't know how you get a promise right from a uh a kristen cinema or joe manchin the only way that one could ensure that they would vote for it is maybe if they did put the debt ceiling into that reconciliation bill they somehow folded it in i don't know but we will have a better sense of this in the coming days at least that aspect of it but i think you're right emma that First of all, there is no uh, there is no salience as to um, the the debt ceiling question. It seems to me, the um, the the I, I was listening to you know I listen to the the radio news every morning just to get a sense of how stories are being reported, and on the AP minute that they do at the bottom of the hour, the top of the hour, they conflated the debt ceiling with the budget shutdown with the uh, the government shutdown the, and and unless you were steeped in this stuff you and i talk about this every day there's no way you would know that these two things aren't related and they aren't it, they they simply aren't uh, related one has to do with the operating budget the other has to do with just paying our credit card bill essentially i should say our credit card bill to ourselves um right. largely and so uh, I, I just don't think this resonates with the American public in the way that uh, it seems um, it seems that uh, the, the, the Democrats think it does. But let's move on to uh, this clip, because um, it is very important for the progressives who are going to vote against the uh, bipartisan um, framework tomorrow if if there's actually a vote that it is clear that they are not blamed if this whole thing falls apart there's simply no way the progressive caucus can vote for this bill after having had a deal that they would both be brought up at the same time Kristen cinema or any 
lawmaker just happens to be her in this instance because many people think that Manchin seems to be okay or they could negotiate with him cannot be rewarded by having her bill pass mm -hmm. in the process of, of sinking the uh, reconciliation bill. So it's very important the way this is framed by progressives so that the news media picks it up. And this is a great example of Ro Khanna um, reframing things on CNN in a way that I think is um, really important to get this out there. Play this clip. Congressman Ro Khanna is one of the progressive lawmakers the president is trying to win over. He joins us now live from Capitol Hill. Congressman Khanna, I'm getting word that Senator Kirsten Sinema has made a third trip to the White House today to meet with the president and also his aides. She is sort of seen as on the other side of where you are on this. She's one of the moderate Democratic senators uh, trying to work out a deal from the other side. Have you gotten any word about whether there might be any breakthroughs tonight? John, the president has already won me over. I'm on his side, as, by the way, is 99 percent of the Democratic Party. We want to deliver on his message for the working and middle class. That means giving affordable child care to everyone watching. It means seniors are finally going to get dental and hearing aids covered. It means that if you're sick, you're going to get paid leave, and you don't have to go into debt to go to community college. And what we have said is that if there is an agreement that the president strikes on this uh, Build Back Better agenda, we will vote for the bipartisan bill. We're willing to negotiate. We've said front load the benefits, don't have them as many years all of the folks at the white house Positive know we're being second. reasonable I just wanna, and literally this is, one this senator is an important um this is an important thing to keep in mind um the numbers are going to go down and we've talked about this before yes. that the numbers at the end of the day are not necessarily as relevant as what gets funded in in, 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 in what manner because there's also different ways in which they can play with the numbers as to what 3.5 actually constitutes. And they're willing the to do that, as Khanna says right there. They're willing to be flexible with, uh, with the salary cap <laughs> for, for what it's worth. Right. But it's actually, in this instance, uh, the way that they'd manipulate the salary cap, and he suggested, and I think we may see this, this bill is for 10 years out. So yeah. we've heard it uh, expressed as $350 uh, billion dollars um over the course of 10 years that's what gets you the 3.5 trillion dollars what they could also do is simply make it a five-year bill we're just going to fund this for five years and therefore you're you're cutting the cost of the bill in half and you're basically challenging future congresses and you which you are doing anyways with the 10-year there's no real uh sense of whether five years out it's going to be a more favorable situation than 10 years at this point you're challenging future congresses uh to cut back on these programs that the american public has already started to uh, adopt um and that rarely happens um particularly if they're successful and they're things like you know paid uh sick leave paid um you know, subsidized uh child care or universal pre-k etc cetera, etc cetera. so uh, that's one of the things that we, I think we can anticipate happening unless Kristen Cinema. well, here's a Ro Khanna starts to express this, this sentiment that maybe there is no negotiation to be had. That the president strikes on this uh, Build Back Better agenda, we will vote for the bipartisan bill. We're willing to negotiate. We've said front load the benefits, don't have them in as many years. All of the folks at the White House know we're being reasonable, and literally one senator, one senator, Kirsten Sinema, is holding up the will of the entire Democratic Party. What has she said that she wants, as far as you know? That's the question. The president keeps begging her, tell us what you want. Put a, put a, a proposal forward. You see the progressives. Look at what we've compromised on. We went from $6 trillion to $3.5 trillion. Then they said we need to pass a bill in the Senate first. We said even if you come up with an agreement, that's fine. Then they said go blow $3.5 trillion. We said, okay, we're willing to negotiate. Front load the benefits. Let's talk about the years. We are willing to compromise. How do you compromise, John, when cinema is not saying anything? Thing. And what's mind boggling is you have unanimity in the House. I, tomorrow, the Speaker could get a deal in the House on a number. And I believe you have 48 senators. I believe Senator Manchin would come on board. It's important for people to realize this. This is not progressives versus moderates. This is the entire Democratic Party and Joe Biden versus Kirsten Sinema. And you have no idea what she wants. 
I have no idea what she wants. I don't think her colleagues know what she wants. I don't think the president knows what she wants. I don't think House moderates knows what she wants. We've said, let's get in a room. Let's negotiate. Let's come up with a deal. And I just don't understand it. I mean, the president carried her state. Look, I respect Senator Manchin. He's in a state that is 30 percent Trump, and he always comes through at the end, and he's a, a person who votes his conviction. Kirsten Sinema is, a, in, Kirsten Sinema is in a state that it, Biden carried. Her colleague, Mark Kelly, who has higher popularity ratings, he's totally on board with the agenda. And Cinema is out there saying she doesn't want to raise even a dime of taxes on the wealthy, uh, on multimillionaires. You know, they're all in my district. I'm saying raise their taxes. But we don't know what she wants. It's, it's really odd. All right. So Pramila Jayapal, who's head of the Progressive Caucus in the House, has right, said so that's, uh, that's that enough. she I mean, will the, not. That's the message there. I mean, right? phew, like put that to music. That was exactly what needed to be said there. And the thing is, it is really odd. Yeah. No There's something quite, off about her personally. No, nobody can quite figure this out because, yeah. um, you know, in, 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 in many um, uh, reporters and, and commentators have made the same point. She could easily go online and raise the kind of money that she's raising right now from corporate interests. But she's choosing to go with these corporate interests, right? She gets this money from Big Pharma. She changes her mind on the... Um, uh, on the uh, pharmaceutical negotiation uh, aspect of this with Medicare. I, I, there's no doubt in my mind that if she was to announce, if I hit a fundraising goal of X amount of dollars from people, I will vote for, you know, negotiating prescription drugs. And she could she, just do her girl boss thing. And she could have re she could have branded herself as like this funky out, out of the box, outside of the box, anti-Trump, um, person who gave flowery speeches on the Senate floor, but this is the route she's chosen to go down. And she seems like, like I, I just was saying, you know, Ted Cruz was the, uh, had the record for being the most hated Senator by members of his own party in Congress. And now I think cinema has taken the cake, right? And oh, without people, a doubt. People, a doubt. people compared the... Cruz to Satan and she's already uh, in her short time period uh, usurped him. And, and this is the thing that is, I think, you know, what has a lot of people baffled. Um, she is going to right now uh, move on, has um, uh, like activated their uh, people in Arizona. The Arizona Democratic Party has said that we will give her a vote of no confidence. Uh, the, the, the groups that organized to first get her to fundraise for her when she was a congressperson are now organizing to primary her. Uh, ultimately. And I, I think your assessment is right. Everything that I've read, all our colleagues now are, are, are getting very, very angry. She is not setting herself up for a corporate lobbyist job at this point, because you need to either have some measure of expertise to go to your colleagues with like, oh, yes, um, she was always the one who knew as much as you could know about fracking. And so we're going to take our word for it. Or you have developed good relationships with um, your uh, colleagues. She has not done that uh, mm -hmm. in this instance. She's not she has no numbers. There is no negotiations. Clearly trying to tank the bill. Maybe, maybe, you know, uh, Big Pharma said, you know, we're going to save billions upon billions of dollars. Uh, um, because of this uh, the sinking this infrastructure bill of Biden's, you know, we're you're going to be taken care of uh, for the rest of your stay. I mean, we we know that call that Joe Manchin had with the no labels people saying, uh, if you folks ever, you know, are going to hire some of my friends uh, in the Senate, this would be a good time to do it, you know, and give them something um, uh, something good to do in, in the future. Um, so it is. It's really uh, fascinating and um, this dynamic that's playing out. And we should say what's happening with the Congressional uh, Caucus. We'll talk more about this uh, uh, later in the program. But this is really important, the Congressive, uh, the Progressive Caucus in the Congress. To make this stand is not only going to, and even if it sinks the, the $500 billion, you know, essentially highway bill plus, that is the infrastructure, the bipartisan infrastructure bill. It's going to have implications down the road in terms of the way that the Democratic Party 
makes their assessments when they start to make decisions as to whether they take progressive mm -hmm. uh, concerns more seriously down the road. Folks, there's more of what you've just saw where that came from. That's if you hit the subscribe and like button. Thank you. Really, thank you.